ClearCalx teams up with Engineer to the Rescue to show you exactly how to determine the input data for rafter design. I'm David Ortican, your host. With the help of this video, you will learn the steps required to create the input data to run this module. If after seeing the video you have any questions, please let us know. We will do our best to help you become proficient in solving structural design problems with ClearCalx. And now, here is our friendly Engineer to the Rescue contemplating this problem and trying to decide just exactly how to proceed with this challenging new assignment. Here we have a roof framing plan for our small mountain house. It's 48 feet deep and 30 feet wide, has a six foot overhang across the front, and we're gonna frame the great room area with one, two, three, four, five runs of heavy timber rafters from each side framing into a heavy timber ridge beam supported here and here and cantilevering the six feet. The back of the structure is gonna be common frame with an LVL ridge. We can go to the IRC design tables for this information here, or we can use clear calcs to design it. In this example, we're gonna be designing the heavy timber rafters and the ridge. We're given a roof pitch of 10 on 12. We've given a ground snow load of 25 pounds per square foot. We can get this from the site address using the ASCE hazard tool or from the local building official. Our ultimate wind speed is 115 miles an hour, exposure B. We're back in the woods, we're not up on a hill, we're not in a coastal region. We're in a typical interior area in the United States. We're gonna use a mean roof height of 30 feet. The actual mean roof height is slightly less, but we need this value to determine our wind loads. We're gonna have an importance category of two for this structure. This is determined from ASCE 7 tables 1.5-1 and 1.5-2. The importance factor is one. The walls are gonna be two by sixes at 16 inches on center. We're planning to use three and a half inch wide berths mouse here and here to minimize the cut up into the bottom of the rafter. We're going to be using two by six tongue and groove decking and exposed ceilings. If you're planning to use this software, you need to have a couple of documents at hand. One is the minimum design loads and associated criteria for buildings and other structures. This is known as ASCE 7-16. It's published by the American Society of Civil Engineers. You can order it from their website. The other document that you should have is the National Design Specification for Wood Construction with Commentary. This is the 2018 edition. It's published by the American Wood Council. It's available from their website. So let's take a look at the input for the software. This is a typical ClearCalx input data sheet for rafters. This is a blank sheet. You can use this as many times as you like. I've taken the liberty of filling one out for our problem. Note, I want you to remember you can use either allowable stress design or load resistance factor design when you decide on the module. So you'll do that when you enter into the software. In the default zone of the software, you'll set up the building code and all of your standard typical values, particularly those that are gonna be used throughout the project. So for rafters, we need to use the actual length of the rafter. Well, how do we get that? We're given the span, which is 15 feet plus a two foot overhang in the horizontal plane. The slope or pitch is 10 on 12. The slope factor is the length of the rafter divided by the span of the rafter. It's based on the pitch or the slope. So we take the square root of the sum of the squares divided by 12, which is the base, and we get a factor of 1.3. This means that every dimension in the horizontal direction when multiplied by 1.3 gives us the length along the slope. So we have a 15 foot horizontal dimension times 1.3 plus a two foot overhang times 1.3 gives us 19.5 feet plus 2.6 feet is 22.1 feet overall. We're gonna be bracing this rafter for lateral stability by restraining the top edge with two by six tongue and groove decking. This will help keep the rafter from buckling. The support locations will be at zero feet and 19.5 feet with the 2.6 foot overhang. And again, a reminder that we'll be using a three and a half inch bearing. 
This is going to be a simple slope rafter versus a horizontally oriented one or a hip and valley rafter. These are the options in the software. This will be a non-repeating rafter since the spacing is greater than 24 inches. Otherwise, we could use an allowable stress increase by having closely spaced rafters. The service condition will be dry. Wet is very unusual. However, there are occasions when you're up on top of a ridge and there's an upsloping wind that brings a lot of wet weather with it that can soak rafters. And so you have to be cognizant of those conditions, in which case you would enter wet and that would, uh, that would reduce the allowable stresses for that condition. The temperature range is going to be 0 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. There are two other zones for extremely hot regions in the United States. We've selected for incised, no, incised are, are uh, cuts into the wood that are automatically made with pressure treat, treating equipment, especially for dug fir. We don't plan to do that. Here we're probably looking at eastern white pine or maybe southern yellow pine for the rafters. We'll pick that species in the software. The deflection limits are going to be L over 180 for live load and L over 120 total. We're not going to have any kind of suspended ceiling, so we're not worried about cracking any suspended ceilings. If we were, we would make these requirements more stringent. When we input the design loads, they're all going to be unit loads, and we're going to be entering the tributary width with each load. In this case, it's six feet. The live load is noted from ASC 7-16, table 4.3-1. All of the slope reduction factors are generated automatically, so we enter the 20 pounds per square foot. The dead load uh, is applied uniformly according to ASC 7-16 in the commentary pages 425 and 427. You can go there and pick out the individual unit weights of all the materials that are going to make up the roof up above the the timber rafters. We're going to guess that about 15 pounds per square foot will be close. This will include the 2 by 6 decking, uh, 2 by over framing, sheathing, and fi finished roofing. We plan to put a 100 pound fan at mid span, so we'll have a single point load. It'll be located 19.5 feet divided by 2 or 9.75 feet from the exterior wall or down from the ridge. The snow load will be the ground snow load, which will just enter directly at 25 pounds per square foot. The software automatically does the calculating for the flat roof loading and adjusting for the cold roof and the pitch. We do have to do a few calcs to determine the wind load. We're going to either have wind toward the rafter or wind away from the rafter. This will be uplift, this will be a download. We're particularly interested in that, not so much for the download, but the upload, because we want to be able to design the connections of the rafter to the ridge beam and also to the wall. So the first thing we need to do is go to ASC 7-16, Chapter 30, for Components and Cladding, page 351 for the roof diagram, diagram and the loads, uh, uh, the zones for the loading, and also Table 30.4-1. The tributary area is the length of the rafter, 22.1 feet times 6 foot spacing, gives us 132.6 square feet, which is over 100 square feet, which is the maximum in the components and cladding table, and so our values will be a little bit conservative. In looking at the roof plan and page 351 at the diagram, we're going to use a weighted average of the end zones, which are the most highly uh, loaded zones in terms of uplift. And when we do that, we determine there is a load of 13.7 pounds per square foot toward the roof and a load of 30 pounds per square foot of uplift up away from the roof. These are ultimate loads. Again, the software adjusted uh, automatically for allowable stress design and introduces the reduction factor. So this is the input data to go into the software. Thank you for listening. Please let us know if you have any questions.